My name is Brandon Hahn. I'm going to talk to you this morning about crime awareness, the internet, and you. Um, have you ever seen a shady person, specific, uh, suspicious, uh, suspicious activity, or basically just had the not so right feeling in your gut about a roommate, a renter, a neighbor, ex boyfriend, baby's mama, whatever it is, you know what I'm talking about. Hopefully, this morning I'm going to go ahead and be able to put your mind at ease. And uh, having done these background checks myself, you know, on the internet, uh, I'm going to give you three websites that you can go to to try and put that feeling or these concerns or just like me, maybe you're just a little curious. Go ahead and get this information under your belt. I'm going to show you where it's at, what information is out there, and what it means. The first one I want to talk about is the Idaho Sex Offender Registry. The nice thing about the Idaho Sex Offender Registry is it lets you search in multiple ways. Um, the first one is uh, by name. So you can just put in somebody's last name or their first name, and it's going to go ahead and search and bring up that information. And it does provide a picture, and it also provides you with the date of the last registration and what the crime is, with the definition, for those of you that are you know, up on sex crimes or what their definitions are. The other one is by city. So if you have, for example, have a child that's going to be going, uh, moving into a different area, or you're going to be moving yourself to a different area, you can check for Boise, Meridian, any, any city in, in, the, in the state of Idaho. So you can know what type of neighborhood you're moving into and who your neighbors are. The last one is by county, which is kind of more broad search, and it definitely is a little overwhelming when you get on the site. So don't be concerned that it says there's 550 sex offenders within a five hour radius of you. Uh, it's kind of a big search. Um, the importance of this also, once again, is so that you can know who's next to the addresses and the places where you, your, your neighbors, your family are going to be at, especially when you're talking about your kids, their playmates, playfriends, and locations. The second one I want to go to is the Ada County Crime Mapping site, which is my personal favorite. It's very interactive, it's very pretty. And this is what it looks like when you bring it up. This is going to be your general map. If anybody online has ever looked at Google Earth or anything like that, you're going to see the same <coughs> topographic map with arrows up here on the left where you can move around. And it has 12 search points or filters, and I'm going to read these to you. They are murder, assault, kidnapping, robbery, burglary, larceny, motor, vehicle theft, vandalism, arson, property offenses, drugs, and society offenses. Um, it's kind of a mouthful and it's a lot, but the beautiful part about this is you can pick each one of these tabs, hit enter, and it's going to go ahead and bring up the uh, corresponding emblem. My personal favorite is the robber with this mask. I'm going to go ahead and read a couple different definitions just to clarify what one crime is as opposed to another. Because my first time on this site, the information was a little vague. Like, I didn't know what an what a assault was. What's the difference between assault and an aggravated assault? And why is it important to us? It's important because a simple assault is read by definition an unlawful physical attack by one person upon another, where neither the offender displays a weapon nor the victim suffers any obvious, severe, or aggravated bodily injury evolving apparent broken bones, loss of teeth, possible internal injury, severe laceration, or loss of consciousness. So when you punch stuff, you're going to have these little fists all over here. You don't want to look at the address that you're looking at and find out what is that fist. Is it that simple one where it could be something as simple as pushing and shoving, two people arguing, or the granddaddy of them all, which is the aggravated self, where an unlawful attack by one person upon another, wherein the offender uses a weapon or displays it in a threatening manner or the victim severes obvious, severe, or aggravated bodily injury involving the apparent broken bones, loss of teeth, possible internal injury, severe laceration, or loss of consciousness. Again, why is that important to us? It was important to me because when I looked on the map and I put my address, there was a lot of fists around it. It's like, what's going on? You know, are these a lot of aggravated assaults? They were all simple assaults. So major, like I said, pushing and shoving, no broken bones, no missing teeth, nobody lost consciousness. But if you were looking at your friend's play place and you would see the local park there and there's a bunch of fists around it and there are a bunch of aggravated assault, that might be a high crime area where there is some, some major assaults going on. You might want to go ahead and stay away from that area. That is, like I said, a very easy site to go to. And it, it is updated every three months and it has a lot of search parameters on there. It can keep you busy for hours. Moving on. The next 
site, which is probably my second most personal favorite, but has by far the most information that you guys are going to be able to go through. You can spend weeks and weeks coming to the site getting new, tasty information, which is the IDOC, which is the Idaho Department of Corrections. The Idaho Department of Corrections has multiple search parameters. First, be by last name, first name, or IDOC number. Most of you are like, what's an IDOC number? Well, if you're a criminal in the state of Idaho and you get trolled, they're going to give you a five to eight digit letter or number that says you are who you are. Kind of obtuse. The way it makes sense to you or it can make a difference in your life is if you have a renter, a roommate, an ex-husband, ex-wife, girlfriend, baby's mom, like I said earlier, whoever your person of interest is, with their last name, you have the ability to go into this IDOC website, put in their last name, hit enter. Even if you don't know how to spell it right, put in the your best guess, and it's still going to query that information. And you can find out if they are currently on probation or were at any point in time on probation. Now, if they're no longer on probation, they're not under supervision, it's not going to tell you why, but at least you know, ah, I was right. My belly wasn't lying. Dude was kind of shady. Again, shady. That's the term we're looking on. So, in conclusion, we're moving on. I'm glad that I was able to give you guys this information. Hopefully, I've been able to put you at ease and kind of remove that feeling in your gut about what do I do in these situations where my body's telling me something and I need to know more information. And there's definitely these three sites that when I get that feeling I go to. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a couple little quotes, some final information. Um, my detective friend John Tepper told me, don't do the crime if you don't want to do the time. And the, the spokesman review basically states that one out of 18 people in the state of Idaho are under Department of Corrections control. And that is placing Idaho second in the nation per capita. So when you look around at your neighbors or your friends or your ex-family members or new family members, they might possibly be on one of these three sites. So go ahead and take the time, do the research, and move on. I hope to have given you the tools today to handle that not so right view, and uh, thank you for your time.